Welcome back to the Go Tanium Show, episode eight, where today we are talking about Mac to the future. That's right, Tanium Client on Mac. Last time we talked about Tanium Client on Linux. Today we're going to talk about Tanium Client on Mac, and I have a very special guest with us today. But before I introduce her, think about it for just a second. Macs are often kind of like the stepchild in IT departments. You know, it's like they're over in the corner somewhere and there's just a few snowflakes. Maybe the executives or marketing or even security people have. Yes, I just called security people snowflakes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's usually just a few of them around. But but we actually have some customers like ourselves where we have a lot of Max deployed. And the challenge that we're trying to solve here is how do I manage all of those different Windows, Mac, and Linux endpoints from a single pane of glass? So I've got an expert here to talk to us about that today. And Kelly, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Kelly Wynn. Um, I've been at Tinium for about five, actually five years now. Um, and I worked internal IT supporting, uh, you know, our Mac enterprise uh, before transitioning over to working with our customers now. Fantastic. So you've actually done hands-on Mac deployment and support with Tanium in an enterprise company, Tanium. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So today we have a number of use cases lined up for you to see across the ops and security to see exactly what Tanium can do for your Mac endpoints. So before we can talk about that, we actually have to know what's supported. So I'm gonna share my screen here. So here we have our public doc site telling you what versions of Mac OS are supported. Kelly, walk us through this. It looks like 10.11 uh, is our oldest version, but we go all the way up to Big Sur, and I'm sure that's a question on a lot of people's mind today. Do we support Big Sur? Do we support the M1? Give us the story there. So for the most part, we do have um, our current client is running um, just fine on uh, Big Sur but we are building out a new Tanium client that's built just specifically for the Big Sur and the M1 um, arm. Fantastic. So we're not binary there yet, but it sounds like it's working. Yep. Okay, good. So then we know that we're supported on a wide variety of Mac machines. How do I then actually deploy so here's our Tanium doc site on deploying the Tanium client to Mac OS. We've got a short link for that for you at the end of the show on the title uh, or in the closing credit slide there. You'll get to that quickly and easily with bit.ly slash Tanium on Mac. But Kelly, you've done this in the enterprise. You deployed Mac to endpoints. Tell us how that works. Uh, so there's uh, different ways to do it. We used it with a uh, .ini file. If you guys... So that way you don't have to post, uh, install, add extra command lines to it. Um, it already reads that particular file and fills in your server name list, uh, your log verbosity, and other information that you want to put in out of box. Um, you can also use something like a MDM. So you can use whatever installing methods you want to do. You can use your MDM to do it. And then there's instructions to kind of help you uh, as well. Yeah, I've got several customers who are using Max as part of their Tanium uh, client uh, endpoint in, in estate, and they've used uh, Jamf as a really popular product in this space. And and mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll mention them by name. They're doing a fantastic <laughs> job in this space. Uh, but the challenge there is then you've got different tools to manage the, the one estate of all your endpoints. And that's what we're helping to solve here today. But it, you can deploy with uh, any number of methods, including Tanium. <laughs> you know, with the client management, you have to open SSH on the box. SSH, and then yeah. you can deploy directly to Max as well. Next, I'm gonna look at our public doc real quick, just on a feature uh, matrix to see which modules are compatible. So here we are at our public doc site at Tanium. And here you can see the compatibility matrix with so all those green circles and some yellow ones. We have tons of core use case support across our modules. Kelly, walk us through a couple of the more popular modules that people uh, use for Mac support with Tanium. Yeah, so for the deploy module, that's going to be um, giving you the ability to install third-party applications, um, and it does support Mac now. So there's 
uh, a gallery that we can show you later that does have pre-built uh, packages for you. Uh, and that way there's, you don't have to necessarily build it yourself. So it makes it kind of easy out of the box. And then there's the uh, enforce module that will help you with uh, file vault management. So if you wanted to turn on file vault, it'll help you escrow those keys with uh, Tanium as well. And then our threat response module. Um, that's gonna be great because with that, a lot oftentimes you wanna do file explore and kind of deep dive into your uh, Mac endpoints and kind of pull back files if you needed to. With the threat response module, you can make live connections and you won't necessarily need to remote desktop that endpoint to grab a particular file. I can't wait to show that to our audience today. Every <laughs> time I see live file browser, Windows, Mac, and Linux, all those OSs support this. It just blows my mind every time I see it. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Kelly, why don't you walk us through some demos that you've prepared for us on the Mac side? Sure. We're gonna pause here because I'm gonna to have to share my screen as well. So in our threat response module, what's great is you can make live connections. And I'm just going to connect to this particular endpoint since it's already here. Um, and from here, once you're able to get in, you can take a look and start exploring the file system. So let's browse our file system and you can start clicking in and getting information from this endpoint, right? I just, if I um, wanted to, every time I see it, I can, yeah. <laughs> if wow. I wanted to, I can pull back a, you know, a file and then I can download that at a late, uh, at a later time as well. And then also though, if you back up to before the file browser, you've got the connection open up there at the top. If you just hit the machine name up there in the oh, list, right. yeah. right. we're actually in the threat response recorder and we can see activity on this Mac endpoint forensically, just like we would a Windows or Linux box. And that's fantastic. How about deploy? I know, I've heard that we can actually deploy software to Macs, which was pretty, I thought that was pretty amazing. For the deploy module, uh, like I mentioned before, there's the packages gallery. Uh, in here, you actually have the ability to um, import pre-made packages for you. So that way you don't have to custom make these. These are going to be updated on a regular schedule about four to six hours after it's newly released. Um, and as often as you know, Chrome and Firefox is updated, you'll see it here as well, okay? Um, but it's great, you can just import it in and you don't necessarily have to rebuild that particular version. That's fantastic. So here is a turnkey software deployment solution for Windows, Mac, and Linux that allows me, it, it already provides this software library for me, and I can deploy these packages very quickly. Wow. Yep. Um, and so I want to just point out, this is my lab, um, because you can see our predefined gallery. It's not as big right now, but there are a lot more packages that are coming that we're building out for you guys. Um, and one of my requests for everyone watching is if there's a particular software you would love to see in this gallery that's um, you know, pre-built for you, please um, put in a ticket or let your TAM know. And then that way we can, they'll let the deploy team know to make sure to add it to our wish list. Fantastic. So yeah, in deploy then for Mac, we've got the predefined package gallery. You can import those into your own gallery uh, there in your software package list. And then from the software packages, you can even build your own software deployment install specifically for Mac. Let me jump in here so we can kind of show you, you know, what you would need to do if you wanted to create your own packages. And we are just running the command lines that you would normally run in, um, you know, terminal. So installer pkg chrome.package and then target and then the destination. Nice. So install, update, remove. All right. <laughs> So we've looked at threat response and we've looked at deploy. Now, officially, we don't have patch module support yet in, for Mac. But Kelly, I've heard that you're working on something. It's prototype. It's not what it's going to look like at the end. But <laughs> what can you show us about actually applying pack? I, I actually just installed, manually installed an update on my Mac yesterday. So this will be really nice when we get patching available for Mac. Show us what that would, could look like. Sure. Um, so I built it into the uh, sensor that you would normally use for the patch module. So um, it's not there yet. So just know that this is, of course, beta. Um, 
So this content will allow you to see, uh, you know, what packages that you need to update. So in terms of it's a software OS update, right? Catalina, Mojave here, um, Safari, or even this one, which is an app store update. Just wanna note that it'll tell you that you have an app store update, but we won't necessarily be able to do that, at least not with this content yet, okay? Um, but with this, you would just find the one that you wanna update, click on it, and then there will be a package that um, is associated with it, um, at least in the, the TAM supported content, not necessarily in the patch module. Yeah. But you so can you deploy an action work... to update that. Yeah. Sorry, you, you have this working with some customers where you're actually updating packages, Correct. right? So um, now this is using core Interact software, um, I should, should say sensors and packages. But actually what's going to happen is later this is going to get built into the whole all up patch module. And that's Correct. the whole different product team. That's not TAM supported okay. content. So that'll be real. And they're working on it and they're taking their inspiration from what Kelly's created here. So we don't have any dates to promise, but just something to look <laughs> for uh, in the future coming from Tanium. We plan for patching of Max. That's going to be exciting. You know, it, it occurs to me, Kelly, that we did not go the basics. Why don't we just go to Interact and just do some basic Mac inventory questions? Because I've, I've had a, a Jamf admin tell me one time, he said, hey, look, I, I, these type of queries and visibility that I get in Tanium, it would take me hours in my other tools. But here in Tanium, I've got instant visibility and control for my Macs just a normal sensor that you would ask on Windows, Linux, um, or Mac installed applications. This will give you a list of the um, applications that are installed in your endpoint and the count. And of course, I only have four endpoints in my uh, enterprise, so I apologize. Uh, that's why the count is all the same for the most part. And we can also do like disk details and file vault encryption and see what volumes are on the machines and if they're locked down, that type of thing. So all those kind of daily questions you get about, hey, tell me about all my Macs and I need to know the you know, count of how many Macs with X, whatever that is, a specific configuration or software on there, whatever. We can pull that up pretty quick here in Tanium. All right. And you said you also had a uh, reveal module demo, I think. I did. So reveal is our module that helps us find data at rest that could be privacy violations, pattern matching, things like that. So what do we have here in the lab? So uh, for our lab, this one, um, I had staged files on one of my endpoints with credit card information. Um, and really this is just doing a direct connect kind of like what we did in threat response, but this one will show you specific locations of where it had caught that, um, that those, uh, the credit card information from. Wow. It's this one. So it tells us that we've got PCI level two and three violations there. And now we're looking, here are the files. Yep. Don't and you would click on it and it'll show you the information of where it would think that that credit card information is. Oh, wow. Yep. All right addresses as well. Mm -hmm. So that's some pretty strong enterprise grade capability. And again, people think that Mac is just maybe just on a sidebar kind of supported on Tanium. But as you've seen in our demos today, there are some substantial capabilities. As you can see from these demos today with Kelly on the Mac side of things, Tanium is a cross-platform platform. And it gives you that single pane of glass for Windows, Mac, and Linux management across your entire environment. And what we've shown you today is literally just scratching the surface, uh, giving you like the, the trailer for the movie, right? We've just shown you some clips of what's really capable with Mac management in the world of Tanium. And like Kelly said, if you have uh, some requests for specific software packages, please reach out to your TAM and let them know. Also, we are out of time on today's Mac to the Future episode. Thank you, Kelly, for showing us those fantastic demos on what's capable with the Mac client for Tanium. 
We've got true enterprise grade capabilities there that we've got to see with our own eyes. And even those really fast connections to the machines to browse the file system or to search for keywords and content on the endpoint. Fantastic. Thank you, Kelly. So check out today's bit.ly link, Tanium on Mac, that will get you to that deployment guide of how to get your Mac agents going. And until next time, go Tanium. <laughs>